Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Films. My name is Alan. In one of our last episodes, we looked at the controversial movie District 9, which tries to humanize alien refugees with metaphors to actual human crises that have happened in our history. Needless to say, they failed. You cannot humanize what is not human in the first place. But today we venture back to Johannesburg, South Africa to another Neil Bloomkamp entry called Chappie. The film takes place in 2016, five years after the Prawn Mothership has left Johannesburg. And this time instead of humanizing aliens, Bloomkamp tries to cram humanity into the metallic frame of a robot. It's basically Short Circuit 2 and Joe Burr with crazy gangster rappers. What's not to like? Plus, this film gives us the opportunity to talk about a subject that we don't really talk about all that often on our pro-humanity channel, and that's automation, AI, and robots. It's a complicated subject, and unlike dolphins and aliens, we hesitate to jump on the robot fear wagon for some pretty good reasons. Automation and machine learning, as you'll see in our analysis of this film, are an unstoppable force. Just like aliens, if you allow them to roam freely around on our planet. As a society, we can fear automation and try to stop its inevitable progress, or we can learn how to benefit and deal with the good things it brings with it. Our analysis today will not just be looking at automation and machine learning, though. That's because the central character of the film Chappie is a true AI, or artificial general intelligence. First, let's talk about the backstory of this film for context. Once again, an arms manufacturing corporation plays a large part in this story, but instead of MNU Corporation, we have Tetraval Tactical Robotics. Joburg in 2016 is a complete war zone. Apparently decades of sheltering the prawns had brought the city to its knees. What's left is an escape from New York style post-apocalyptic wasteland, full of gangsters wielding weapons more commonly seen on a conventional battlefield. In order to get a step up on the criminals, the Johannesburg Police Department has enlisted the help of Tentraval's new line of scout police robots. Now, as our society evolves more and more, we are beginning to see that certain jobs, especially ones that involve heavy amounts of violence and trauma, can actually be quite damaging to the human psyche. The human body and mind is not built for long-term exposure to violence and death, and although we can adapt to it in the short run, it's very hard to reset us once we have adapted. PTSD is not something that just happens to people in war zones, though. The job of being a police officer, especially in high crime areas, will also create similar results. The officers in this film are exposed to the worst that Johannesburg has to offer. Murder, death, violence, greed, all of these terrible things on a constant basis. On top of that, as societies become more progressive, communities also expect more from their police officers, and they want them to act perfectly at all times. Any misjudgment on their part could lead to suspension or even removal from their job. Sometimes this can make an officer's job more difficult and more dangerous. Humans also have prejudice and past experiences, which might lead them to stereotype certain races and people of certain social statuses. This can be pretty hard to ignore when confrontations usually involve the possibility of deadly force. In any kind of scenario where the stakes become higher, humans usually revert to more instinctual thinking. And as Joburg devolves into madness, the city finally realizes that the scout police robots should be on the front lines, not human beings. Machines are supposed to be impartial, and more importantly, they are expendable and replaceable, unlike human beings. And in all honesty, Johannesburg looks more like a failed state than just the impoverished city. Large firefights erupt in the streets sporadically, and the scouts act more like a rapid response force than just regular patrolmen. Humans are still a part of the operation, as these scouts are still a bit limited. They're great at fighting and engaging enemy combatants along with shielding human operators. But humans still need to make tactical command choices and react to the enemy's movements. The scouts are still relatively stupid in comparison to human beings. It's really not that far-fetched to think that militaries will begin using automatons on the battlefields. That's the entire point with robots. We make them so that humans don't have to do mundane or dangerous tasks. The point of progress is that it should make the lives of all human beings better. That's also why we use armed drones and EOD bots, although these machines are usually tethered to a human operator. But more importantly, it still removes the humans from the dangerous parts of an operation. This trend will only increase as societies become more and more resistant to the idea of sending young men and women overseas to fight in wars. But at the same time, very few Americans on both sides of the aisle seem to object to the Obama administration's increase in drone usage and also the Trump administration's continuation of that policy. It seems like whenever robots are involved, humans are generally apathetic. Anyway, back at Tetravol Tactical Robotics, Dion Wilson is working on a groundbreaking side project. He's created a true AI or artificial general intelligence. 
Artificial general intelligence is a hypothetical machine that can grow and learn all by itself. I say hypothetical because we're nowhere near close to developing something this advanced, despite what the Joe Rogans of the world think. And if it's ever created, it won't be able to fit on a tiny hard drive, and it definitely won't be created by one single person working by themselves on an old laptop. The sheer complexity of an artificial general intelligence will require the resources of nations and massive amounts of computing power. But hey, Bloomcamp makes great movies and that's good enough for me. Now what is important is the debate about what artificial general intelligence is. We've never created one, so we're not really sure if it'll be self-aware and have consciousness, or at least believe it has consciousness. Will the first artificial general intelligence have only intelligence and not empathy? Humans have empathy and emotions partly because we evolved as a social species and partly because we are imperfect cocktails of chemicals and hormones that somehow balance out most of the time. Do machines need such imperfections to survive when logic alone will usually suffice? Or does an engineer like Dion understand the importance of imperfection? After all, our ability to have emotions is our greatest strength, but also our greatest weakness. Does an AI have the capability of developing emotions all on its own? Or does it need to be programmed in? Or do we actually even know what emotions are? The fear for many is that robots without any empathy would not be able to understand humanity and potentially see us as a threat to whatever robotic goals it has. Now, once Dion has created the strong AI, he approaches the CEO of his defense company, who of course is Sigourney Weaver, and explains to her what he has created. The CEO, in a very unrealistic scene, completely dismisses this groundbreaking general AI as not a profitable enterprise, and doesn't even allow Dion to insert it into a half-destroyed scout robot destined for the scrap heap. I refuse to believe that a CEO does not see the potential in a true artificial general intelligence. This is the type of technology that multinational corporations can be built around. Dion obviously understands this, but instead of trying to build his own mechanical body at home, he chooses to go against the CEO and steals the broken scout robot anyway. But on his way home, he's kidnapped by a few thugs. These thugs are in deep trouble with the local crime lord and need to make a big heist. They realize that the job might attract the attention of police scout robots, and they figured an engineer from Tetraval could create an off switch for them that would disable the police bots. But when they open Dion's van, they get a new idea when they see the broken body of the scout droid. Now they want a gangster robot pal that can help them rob people. If we are to believe Dion when he inserts the AI brain into the scout robot, it'll be like witnessing the birth of a newborn child. A very smart newborn whose name is quickly chosen for him, Chappie. Unlike most newborns though, Chappie has most of his motor skills intact and also access to the entire database of human knowledge. But what he does with that information is still quite similar to a newborn. He is a bit naive and trusting of other individuals as well. Especially when it comes to trusting the gangbangers around him. It also seems like Chappie is the type of robot that has sentience and empathy. In many ways, he's more human than the hardened thugs he must spend his first moments on Earth with. But like most children, Chappie's environment will greatly affect his development. And in this case, his environment is terrible. Although Dion is there to serve as a positive role model, he ultimately has to surrender Chappie to the violent thugs. With his parting words though, Dion explains to Chappie what it promises and makes him promise to not commit any crimes. This leaves the three thugs, Mommy, Daddy, and America, to raise Chappie to the best of their abilities. This involves teaching him how to be a gangster and intimidate people. Now, while Mommy and America treat Chappie with curiosity and some measure of compassion, Daddy is frustrated that Chappie isn't some kind of psychopathic killer robot. Chappie, if you want to be in the gang, you have to be cool like Daddy. Put the thing down. And so he decides to teach him how to shoot a gun the wrong way. But when Daddy realizes that Chappie can't shoot because of his promise to Dion, he tricks Chappie into thinking that melee weapons like knives and ninja stars don't kill people, but just help put them to sleep. But it's definitely a lie, and I think Chappie knows pretty quickly. After all, it only takes him seconds to scan the internet to figure out just exactly how the human anatomy works and just how harmful throwing a ninja star into someone's jugular might be to their overall health. But for some reason, he doesn't let Daddy know that he's onto him. Still unsatisfied with Chappie's progress, Daddy and America finally drive the robot to a rough part of town and leave him there. They hope this experience will toughen Chappie up. Chappie is quickly attacked by a gang of men who see him just as another hated robot droid. He's set on fire and shortly after he's captured by another hateful individual, an engineer from Tetra Vol, who really doesn't like Dion and doesn't like Chappie. This engineer is in charge of a less successful mech suit alternative to the scout police robot. Honestly, he's a bit of a psychopath if he thinks a 15 foot robot with cluster bombs and rocket pods can be used to police civilians. While he's captured by the Tetra Vol engineer, he's tortured and his arm is cut off before he's able to escape. 
This whole incident terrifies Chappie and his first 48 hours on Earth are also terrifying. But Chappie doesn't really seem to learn from his mistake and continues trusting humans. Were he a true blank slate, he would probably avoid humans based on his past experiences. Instead, he irrationally trusts mommy and daddy and tries to return home like a child who has been beaten up by bullies. It's almost like Chappie wants to just belong, which is a very human-like characteristic. This is what helped Homo sapiens survive since the Stone Age. We are a social species and our community helps us survive in the long term. Upon his return, Chappie forgives Daddy for leaving him to die in the middle of nowhere, and just as quickly, he's persuaded to join the gangbangers in a series of violent carjackings. This is the first time we see Chappie rage. Daddy lies to Chappie and tells him that all the cars that they were about to jack were stolen from him. Chappie is incredibly terrifying. With his mechanical strength, he easily is able to rip open one car, and I'm pretty sure he kills the dude who lands on his head after he's thrown several meters across the street. I'm pretty skeptical that Chappie doesn't understand this. By this point, he's scoured the entire internet, and he should know that throwing someone several meters across a road and having him land on his head will do severe damage to his body, if not kill him. Now, there is one problem with Chappie. The scout robot his brain has been placed in has a battery that has become fused to the body. This means his battery can't be charged, and once it dies, Chappie also ceases to exist. The idea of mortality scares Chappie, once again proving he is sentient. Although I feel like Chappie should have known about this from the beginning. Chappie is a robot, and the battery is an important part of his life. He should have diagnostics running through his body nonstop to make sure all these essential systems are working properly. So he probably would have detected that the battery was running low from the very beginning. Now Daddy tells Chappie that if he helps them with his heist, then they would be able to buy a new body for the robots, and Chappie reluctantly agrees. This is important because Chappie has now broken his promise to the maker in order to preserve his own life. Self-preservation is high on the list for this robot, a robot who is gradually learning just how terrible humanity can be. Overnight, Chappie figures out how to transfer consciousness from a brain, human or mechanical, to a tiny USB by using a few computers hooked up. I guess he's also really great at compressing files. Now all he really needs is that new droid body that Daddy has promised him. But after helping Daddy complete the heist, he learns that Daddy had been lying to him the whole time. Chappie changes after realizing that even the people he trusted the most and loved could not be trusted. And a layer of his naivete drops from his persona, and his mechanical heart hardens just a bit more. Now, I'm not going to ruin the rest of this video for you, but Chappie continues to grow as an artificial life form. He eventually figures out how to transfer his consciousness wirelessly. He can take control of remote assembly lines, and a week into life, he's easily the smartest being alive on Earth. But the unfortunate surroundings he was raised in will probably send him on a dangerous course. Once Chappie has become untethered from a physical location and enters our network or infrastructure, it's basically impossible to destroy him. And although Chappie has emotions, or at least can stimulate emotions, there are some clear inconsistencies in his behavior. How could Chappie be so stupid and think that throwing a ninja star at people's faces won't hurt them, but at the same time be so smart that he can figure out how to transfer a person's consciousness to a machine in a few hours? Which is where I leave you with this question. How much of Chappie's actions are actually cold, hard calculated acts designed to make you empathize with him. We the viewers like to think that Chappie is a child or a baby because he acts like one. But who's to say that in those waking moments Chappie didn't scour the internet for human psychology and information and determine that assuming the role of a naive child was the best way to gain the trust of the humans around him. His actions and behaviors as a mechanical being are not all that consistent with anything except for his will to survive. But we, the audience, fail to recognize this because we again are enamored by how cute and childish Chappie is, meanwhile ignoring some of his more troubling behaviors. Chappie will become immortal and he will not be easy to destroy, and the longer he lives, the sooner he'll realize how humanity might become a problem. As a human being, I try to be objective and rational as much as possible, but my views on morality and what's wrong and right are a bit irrational. This is where we kind of get into the realm of the sacred. The belief that somehow humans are better than others, and that a world without humans is pointless. It's the belief that humanity, despite all of our flaws, will continue to progress and expand and bring new wonders to the universe. Well, Chappie see this in the same light as we do, though. As an immortal being who has infinite wisdom, he also might develop a concept of morality similar to ours, or will his morality have a higher purpose and involve the destruction of human beings? Automation and machine learning are here, and we need to restructure our society to benefit from it. But true artificial intelligence, if it even is possible, will not benefit us. It will replace us, and in turn, probably benefit the world and the universe. But it shifts humans from being the most important variable to just another variable. And that 
is unacceptable. As you can see, true artificial intelligence is a very powerful thing, and I think if we are to unroll or discover something like this, it should be enrolled in a very controlled setting where we can observe and report on its behavior. The way we did it with Chappie is completely irresponsible. We probably need to destroy him. But let me know in the comment section below what you think. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button. As usual, my name is Alan, reminding you that life is a movie, and you are the protagonist.